Just talking to myself. Don't worry about it. Recording started. Does this happen 80s, 80s a lot? 80s music is bumping. Yes. Boom, 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 boom. Right. We're on, Adam. Dun, dun, dun. We are. Yes, we are. We are on for another edition of the Thirst Model Cast because we are masochists and, well, we do too much work. But not as much as Jay, and Jay deserves all the appreciation and credit and glory. Glory be to Jay. But anyways, we are here today because we just did the um, the power rankings, and this was the most votes that we have ever received. We got 41. Usually we hover around like 25. I think the highest before this was 32. So I was so excited and i just kept track of this all day at work and water says everything just piled up and came right home didn't see any reason to keep it open anymore so i i shut it down and hopefully we'll get it posted soon so i uh, i wanted to thank everybody for that that's the first thing and then i wanted to talk about um <laughs> well um ttt's burial that's definitely on the uh, agenda for today okay. and then pew apps sorry numbers don't lie um although some people voted twice i'm pretty sure because there were a couple of cases of mystico being the only vote on a ballot um pew was written in for a female <laughs> there was there was an all last blacksmith so five best wrestlers last blacksmith um best female wrestler last blacksmith um best match every last blacksmith match that was available plus some <laughs> last blacksmith write-ins um best storyline last blacksmith um most influential group the horsemen which i assume is the last blacksmith <laughs> so um i have no idea who did that um thanks for the chuckle i didn't count any of your votes i apologize um, so yeah, I'm just gonna I'm, I'm gonna go right down the list. Like literally, I'm just gonna go down the list. I'm gonna tell you what the top 15 are, and it, literally just tell me if you agree with it, and or if you don't agree with it, or if it surprised you. And then I'm kind of I'm gonna kind of dive into how it went, and I'm I'm gonna tell you my ballot. I'd like to hear yours and your your thought process on it as well. well Sound fair? Agree, as in you should I be taking position into account, or just should they be in the top 15 at all? Are you talking like K-Fave? No, 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 no. Like, uh, so if you're going to say number five is Mystico, you know, even if I were thinking Mystico should be in the top 15, should I agree <clears throat> on where he is? Or? No, no, bury his ass. Right. Like, if you think he shouldn't be on it, tell him no, absolutely not. If you think he's too high, say no, fuck him. Um, there's actually a few people who aren't on the list or are really low on the list that have always been there. And I was surprised when I was putting everything together. So um, you have access to I the do. data. And and it's pretty easy to see who number is. one is. Uh, Paul Pugh won this in an absolute fucking landslide. Yeah, and that's, uh, I mean, he's the greatest of all time. Uh, it's the reason he's one of my favorite OC, not one of my, he is the my favorite OCW persona of all time. And he just fucking walked back in here and took back the number one spot like like he never lost it right and of course we should preference this by saying that by him stealing all the votes ttt has one representative on this entire list yeah, he, he buried the collective that is my faction by himself he he hasn't even been around with the title with his with him telling you that he's gonna bury you for more than a couple mm -hmm. of hours and ttt is already already right. buried the experiment might uh, be I over. So. I'd like to thank Paul Pugh for that, but uh, the season is young, Adam. Right. Okay. No, not really. <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah, Paul Pugh won by over 20 votes. Um, he won most influential, and I'll get to the match later. I actually think that he was part of the best match as well. Uh, number two, h 2 I disagree. Uh, I think he's too high. I wouldn't say he's not... Um, I wouldn't say he's not in the top 15 at all, but I, I just think he's too high. Uh, this wasn't a like a peak H2O month, in my opinion. He's also one of the best kind of tweener, super confident faces, but um, kind of a similar thing happened with the Inception as it happened with TCT this season. Uh, not this season, but this 
you know, between the two power rankings is that we kind of fell off with uh, group RPing and kind of putting the, the faction presence out there, and uh, so did the Inception. There was a there was a period in the middle where it was kind of like, you know, it was oh, is it over? <laughs> so uh, I can I, I expected him to be a lot lower. I imagine him being the world champion, taking part in two of the best matches uh, was a big part of it. But well, he he received no like bonus points for being world champion because this is all post. Like nothing was taken into consideration exactly. in terms of who held the title going into it. It's all about who who held the okay, title. So it's only about it. so the only people that got he, points are current champions. Current champions post yeah, clash so just right now. So yeah, yeah, as of this. Point. Yes, um, but you are right. H two took a lot of votes because of of him being in so many good matches. I, I mean, um, the best match. Might as well say it was Paul Pugh Cass versus H2. That was the the most well received match, and it beat out Bobby Court and Shepard by a few. But then H2O was also part of that Shepard versus Drago match, and then he had a Paul Pugh match as well. So he was collecting votes from a different from quite a few different mm -hmm. you know sources. Um, third place uh, was B17, which. If you said he should be lower, I would absolutely agree with you. Um, he he got fourth most influential, but like it was it was the storyline that ultimately bumped yeah, him up so high. Number one, I can see that on here. Uh, in terms of the, the just the pure storyline that had the most influence, and I'm just double checking to make sure that that's accurate. Yeah, Code and B17 despise each other, dominated. Like even it, it got almost double the votes as Pew returns as the main storyline heading into the clash. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you would you be okay uh, with well, keeping them there? My, in my opinion, this after Pew and you know typically here in the middle areas, usually it's like five to ten, or like five to eight, four to nine, something like that. There's a lot of close calls. Um, I would I would kind of classify just looking at the numbers here that anywhere between three and five I would be okay with, but he doesn't belong outside of the top five for sure. All right. All right, um, number four is Valkyrie, which, as you discussed with me, you thought there would be a little bit of a, yep. a drop with Valk. Because usually Valk dominates the most influential female category. And this time, she still won it, but not by a very wide margin, but still collected a lot of votes from it. And that's pretty much why she's up there. She's always up there because no one's ever really challenged to take away votes. And there was somebody to challenge to take away votes. It's just there wasn't enough and people to do had, it. She still There's had only storyline, which got a bunch of votes. Um, and then she had a couple matches as well. Valk versus Moore got the fifth most votes of just in pure matches that stood out. She also had Valk versus Blaine that was in there taking a few votes away. And um, uh, the storyline with Moore. So I can see how all that would add up to get to number four. When you take all of that into account, it makes sense. I did want to ask you... You know the other rankings better than I have, especially since Valk has been here. So is this kind of where she usually falls? As my memory gets back in, into where it belongs uh, after a busy week, this kind of, I, it sounds like this is where she like always is, but is this the highest that she's ever been? No, no, this isn't the highest. She uh, once came in second wow. place. I, I remember she came in second place on the power ranking that Mugen, Mugen had won. Um, and that was the highest. Usually, traditionally, she hovers anywhere from second place right to around fifth or sixth. So this is right in line with what I was expecting to see from her. Um, and it really does come down to the fact that there's only two or three females that constantly take votes from her. But this was the first time anyone's actually been close to overtaking her, which is the person uh, I'm referring to as Blaine, who will actually pop up a little bit later on the list. But number five is actually Rex, which I was very surprised to see him at fifth because when I was watching, as the votes came in, he had the second most influential votes. And he had a high match as well, like Rex versus Jacob Trance was the third uh, most well-received match. But then... Like, there was no love for the storyline at shocks all. shocks me, by the way. It actually, like, I'm, I'm kind of blown away that some of these other ones got as much as they did. 
Uh, the match obviously was awesome. You know, the finish was the finish was uh, well received. The storyline I'm looking here. Rex main event player was tied for fourth, so it was uh, below Code B17. Despise each other. Pew returns and Valk and Ashley Moore. Um, I think I think it was probably third. If not, like I, th- I thought it was a lot better than than tied for fourth with with two other storylines. So uh, I did not expect him to be this low, to be honest with you. I thought everything was really good, but like you said, the love for the matches and the storyline just wasn't there compared to the people that are near the top. Um, I think he deserves better, but it's certainly not an insult to be fifth. No, it's not. Um, one thing this thing might have hurt it was is actually they've had a lot of match endings that yeah. were screwy with with interference and stuff which in my mind is, is is more than acceptable i've done it before as well um but to have it be so consistent might have kind of wore on people a little bit let's see so sixth place then was blaine uh and a lot of that was because she received the second most votes in terms of influential female and you know that was that was a uh, that was something I was really happy to see. Um, she, you know, things have kind of taken off for her, and I'm certainly enjoying the character. Uh, and I really enjoyed the storyline that I'm I'm hopeful is still ongoing with uh, Dragana, and uh, a few people enjoyed it as much as me, but not not too many, I guess. Well, six most. <laughs> uh, it's good to see like more dominant. It- like you mentioned earlier, Valkyrie usually is unchallenged as the top female in these power rankings. So I do enjoy seeing, and more names are going to pop up later, but Ashley Blaine especially competing for the top one. Um, and it goes to show you that it doesn't have to be a main character. If you do something right, it go it shows. And prior to this, I don't think a lot of people, you know, I thought didn't think a lot of people expected you to do a whole lot with Blaine. Like she was just going to be a a joke character and alt in the background and proved everybody wrong and put on one of the best storylines of the past four weeks. Well, I didn't, I didn't expect her to, um, I didn't expect her to, to be, um, a, a major player either. Things just, you know, fell into place that way. Um, I'm very happy that they did and I'm certainly enjoying it. So, uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seventh place was code wow. code Jackman. Well, he, um, I was surprised by it too, but he was part of the storyline that was the most well received. He had a few matches in there, especially uh, the C community versus Invictus was the fourth highest rated match. You know, regardless of of the FPR breaks, I, I guess people either enjoyed the fact that it was a, a different approach to it. It looked, you know, it looked. Outside of the uh, FPR break, it, I, th- I think, you know, it looked good. It looked really competitive, and I think people, Jay himself, he said that he really enjoyed the um, the Hulk all moment uh, when I when I went white angry, as he <laughs> said, or white guy angry. Yeah, it was it was a really good moment, and like yeah. I told you, watching the commentary of that match, just to stay on the uh, the match specifically, watching the match and doing commentary, I didn't notice anything until I actually went in afterwards. So um, on its face, I guess if people are looking for the breaks going in, they're going to see them. And when you actually see them, they're fucking terrible. They're like, they're bad ones. But uh, it was still a good match. I don't want to detract from that too much. And that's the reason that Code's up there. Plus, Code is a good example of, uh, and he shouldn't take this as an insult, not being very good on the sticks, yet still being one of the best content creators. Even if it's not by pure writing, those videos were fresh and fun. And, you know, the idea, the story was good, too. Oh yeah, I gotta give him so much credit for the for the videos that have been done. He's put together the video work, and then he sent me the outlines and just allowed me to you know go in there and, and, and record some audio with it. So I've had a lot of fun with that, and I'm really looking forward to you know seeing where the story goes with him. But um, yeah, this is this has been by far the best story that I've ever been involved in with with B17, wow. no doubt. Uh, I I've enjoyed it even more than working with austin lee because it's it's a much more defined and focused story and so creative. i've really enjoyed it probably one of the most creative yeah there's a lot more it's variables not just in it nice guy versus mean guy in this case there's like there's fact a little bit of faction stuff behind it there's uh bray is an interesting wrinkle being like kind of 
on both sides and struggling internally with uh, fighting you and trying to follow along with the C community. So it was, there's a lot of creative parts to it. Um, and like I said, adding in with the video content and stuff just makes it all that better. Yep. Um, eighth place and the lowest he has ever fallen on his power rankings. Um, and he, he kind of argued against himself getting votes, although I, I did vote for him. I'll discuss that a little bit later. But Co or Cass came in at eighth, which is the lowest he has ever been in any of these. Yeah, it's kind of shocking. Um, I don't know. I mean, I know he's he's got a different schedule than he usually does. Maybe it'll just be a time to adjust. But I also agree with him that he I didn't I, I didn't vote for him. Um, he's still influential because he's Cassidy Hayes and he was involved in um, the best matches and the a really good feud. And he's he's just Cassidy Hayes. But in terms of representation from show to show uh and it kind of goes hand in hand with the lack of representation from ttt and inception uh you know relative to the consistency we had at the beginning he just wasn't there as much so i think if he was around as much and pumped up the feud as much as paul Pugh and harvey did it would have been uh he would have been higher on this list for sure mm -hmm. now i will say this because Cass and, Sp and spider are relatively close this this spot will be um, TTT okay. like this at, like I, I always group them together like if the story that they have put together um, encompasses all the members of the faction then I kind of usually put them together for representation and the same thing it happens with most of the tag teams but only if they're relatively close in the votes um, ninth place was Ashley Moore probably the biggest surprise that I saw uh, in, in this ranking I, I did not foresee really? that coming okay. Um, got got a lot of votes for influential female. Um, plenty of votes when it came to the storyline with Velk. Pretty much anyone that works with Velk, usually you'll get some gets a lot of recognition, gets a lot of exposure, and and that definitely played you know a, a great part in how Ashley Moore came to to find herself for the first time on these rankings at that's ninth the place. Third women, I think you you said at the beginning this is a new record. We have four this power rankings. Yeah, this will be the this will be the most uh, females that we've ever had on That's the power awesome. rankings, and it, yeah, absolutely. Like seeing the, the like the PS4 women's division is, you know, very, very diverse, uh, very deep, and, and potentially even very competitive. Um, I don't really know what Moore's like on the sticks, though. Yeah, it, if I if I everywhere. recall correctly, she kind of got she's kind of gotten. Um, better as, as things have progressed, but maybe not quite at Valk's level no, yet. No, but in, and in Valkyrie has like a refined uh, move set, and, and she always knows what to do in the right situation. I think Ashley's still figuring out things in other aspects of OCW. So like Valkyrie's very comfortable mm -hmm. doing promoing, and she's kind of got a schedule, and she's super easy to work with. As I know, I've, I've kind of been doing the thing with Alyssa, but um, so I think as Ashley more figures that out more and, and becomes more normal on actually RPing consistently and what she has. So now the focus can be on refining the moveset and always having an answer. And she actually looked really good in the, in the ambition match, given Bell is a rookie and uh, has had even less time to do so. But she's kind of in the middle. She's kind of where she belongs. I, I think she would be the worst of the top four vote getters between Valkyrie, you, uh, Blaine, uh, Dragana, and Ashley Moore, uh, at least on the sticks. But I mean, she got over Dragana on the and most impactful, and that's that's super important. This particular power rankings, like you you mentioned, the depth of the women's division, especially on PlayStation, it is it is just it speaks volumes to the women's division where it is now from where it was four months ago. We had like six, like there was six women, and now I think there's like twelve or thirteen or fourteen. Like it, it's almost doubled, if if not more than that. And uh, this is an absolutely great indication of that. So. Hopefully we'll see more new names going forward and um, the, the same names. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I'd like to – I mean, Flojo was at one time on here uh, well, falling off Yeah, she has a suspension thing going. It didn't really draw much, but I think it's time. it was just a way for Gooch to step back and reassess the situation. So I, I, don't, I don't put any stock into Flojo having only one vote. No, I, I don't either, but I am hopeful that – the time away from it has allowed um, him to kind of think about how he wants to proceed moving forward. Because I know at one point he was talking about um, the Flojo character, you know, saying bye-bye oh, yeah. long-term. 
uh, and then focusing on um, on um, Betamax. But uh, I hopeful I'm hopeful that 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 I does agree, not happen. Nick Betamax is not over. <laughs> Nope. Uh, tenth place is Austin Lee. This is kind of be. This is going to be one of those combination sections where it's going to be Austin Aries yeah. together because Aries was relatively close to him as well. Um, but I mean, I was. I'm, I'm not surprised to see them on the list, but I am surprised that they are as high as they were. Um, I've enjoyed their story, but they've also like. There's been. It's been really messy in the tag team division on turmoil. So I didn't know how people would respond to it really. And like, they didn't get any votes for, um, for tag team faction influential. And that, that didn't surprise me. No, because I think they were more of a product of the storyline. I totally agree with you. I, I don't even, I mean, it's tough to say they shouldn't be in the top 15 at all. But the roster, if I'm, I look at this because I'm like, oh, of course they should make it. This guy should make it. That guy should make it. There's a lot of really good talent like all over our OCW right now. So even being top 15 is super impressive. There's like 60 of us, and then through us, you know, after alts and everything, there's a lot of fucking characters. So uh, a lot of people putting in a lot of good work, and it's impressive that they were up here. In terms of most influential, I. I guess looking just at the votes, maybe they should have got a few less, stole a few votes away from some people. They definitely deserved it in terms of the storyline, though. Um, but also, Austin Lee kind of has, he's got a couple other things going on. And one of the biggest parts, it kind of helps with the C community, uh, the B17 Co. Jackman thing. It's the same kind of thing. They had creative video content, and that leaves a, a real long-lasting mark on people, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, 11th place was Trance. Which, uh, the Rex, the I am more interested about the idea of Rex becoming a main eventer than I am interested in about who Rex is going over to get to that main event spot. The trans character, um, I like to a certain extent, but I'm also done with the trans character. He seems done with the trans like character. It, right, it, the story has seemed very i wouldn't say uninspired but Lack, lackluster it's it lackluster sure it's been lackluster but the end result the potential of seeing rex become the champion which which he did that was the payoff that i was really happy to see it was what i really wanted to see like i'm i'm happy to see rex where he is and it didn't really matter to me who he overcame trance to me was just the stepping stone at this point now yeah yeah i think this is probably trance just being here is kind of a foregone conclusion um i would if you told me he didn't make the list at all i wouldn't be shocked but just because he was involved in um probably my, one of my top two or three angles and you know leading up to the clash it, it makes sense why he would sneak onto the list but like i said if he didn't make it at right. all i wouldn't be shocked Right, he did have um, a lot of votes for Rex versus Jacob Trance. That that match was was well received, and rightfully so. It was a, it was a, it was a very solid match. The ending kind of fucked with people a little bit. Like, what the hell is happening it here? Does for the vets, but, especially. Oh uh, uh, yeah, and then he also had a few other matches: uh, Trance versus Aries versus Lee. That was uh, very well received as well. So you know, things kind of fell into place. Um, he is where he is and I, I mean I can make the argument for, for him falling off but I certainly can't make the argument for him no, no, being no, any I higher than currently is yeah. um, 12th place is Bobby I, I think it should be higher and, you know Bobby probably should be higher he really should like he has the title He it's it's a big win for him like, as, as far as I know as far as I fully understand that is his first title in OCW. That's the way I understand it too. The way I've been told, the, the long running joke is they call him the uh, like the three time number one contender because he always gets to that point and he can just never do it. Uh, so it was not only a big surprise because it kind of at this point felt like he was just always going to be stuck there as the really good rider who could never make it happen on the sticks. 
Uh, and I know it's not the world title, but the Pride Championship against two guys that are... I know Court shit talks himself all the time, but those guys do not suck at the game. So it was definitely formidable competition, and they have brought real life. This feud has brought real life to the Pride Championship, and now you see a bunch of the Riot guys gunning for it. Right. And that was my favorite moment in the wow. entire show. That was my favorite moment in the entire show. Seeing him win, not my favorite match, sure, yeah, but it was my yeah. favorite moment. Seeing him overcome and then win the title and then listening to the entire Discord. Yes. Like, go, it was, like, it, it was, people was an were, outpour. People were legit yeah, yeah, happy. Yeah, it was an outpour of support. Uh, OOC, like everybody was super happy and he picked the perfect victory formation uh, like in game while that celebration is going on um, to hear everybody pop for him. I was like, obviously I don't know the history as well as everybody else, but it, it genuinely made me happy as a byproduct of listening to guys like Spider and um, and Jay and, and, and uh, Drago and all those guys who know a little bit more be super happy for him. I was too. He's, he's good man. Uh, 13, Dragana. This is low for me. You think so? Like, I would... Like, I would have thought that Dragana would have been closer to the top. And certainly I thought that she would have gotten more influential votes than Moore did. But once again, like I said, Moore was a byproduct of working with Valkyrie. And when people work with Valkyrie, they, they get a lot right, of attention. Right, but I would say... That just like you said, the numbers, number one, of course, this is going to be Valkyrie. That's the default in terms of the women rankings. Numbers two and three, I expected a combination. Like, I don't know who was going to be two, who was going to be three, but it was going to be Blaine and Dragana. Uh, and then I expected Ashley Moore to get a lot of votes. I'm happy she made it into the top 10, uh, top 15. But it was, it's very surprising to me that Dragana fell the way she did. It's not like she was carried in the feud or anything. Those, those RPs were great. Mm hmm. Uh, number 14 is Drago, which is also low to me, but less happened with the um, open challenge in these last two months. Yeah. Did anybody? So that that didn't play as big a part because there was a lot more focus upon the P3 versus TTT yeah, thing. I, I didn't mean to cut you off. Is, I think the only open challenge match that happened from one power ranking to the next was the actual uh, fi the finale between Blacksmith and Drago, right? Unless he fought at the super terminal where all this began, then yes. And I don't think he did. But I, I don't. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's, he yeah. didn't either. Uh, so the last blacksmith was uh, the match. Is is the only match that I think happened with the open challenge was certainly would certainly um, hurt in terms of um, like riot people. Like I, I can if I look at the the. The individuals. I don't know names, obviously, but you can kind of get a sense of who's who's voting from a riot perspective, who's voting from a turmoil oh, yeah. perspective, and usually he's getting votes from turmoil as well because he's appearing, and he's defending that title on turmoil, and he's making appearances for that. There wasn't as much as that this time, so usually when I saw turmoil listings of people, you know, kind of voting in in favor of turmoil, Drago wasn't usually on those. Yeah, and that makes sense, and. Um when you look at this list, Drago and Dragana are perfect examples of when you look at this list on its face and you see Drago 14, you're immediately like, oh, what? what? That cannot be right. But going through it one by one with you here, it's it's hard for me, really, with the exception of maybe one or two, to move those two up. Just because, like I said, the the roster right now and the talent that we have and what we just watched over the last four weeks is stacked. Mm-hmm. And the last place on this, and this should be fun. This might change. This this might change. There's a there's a really good chance that this might change because I am I'm very uncertain about how I feel about this. Not because of the person. Like, fifteen is is mystical. But there are two ballots where the only vote for influential people is mystical. Two ballots. If I take those two ballots away, it would be trash. Trash would be the next one in line. I'm not saying that Miss Code doesn't deserve to get recognition, but I am saying that someone did not uh, someone did not take this properly seriously. And they didn't think I would look at it. Uh, 
Now, usually I'm willing to kind of like skip over and just avoid some of those votes. But then the rest of the ballot was filled out in a way that was like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Like they took Mm -hmm. time for that. But, you know, as Jay says, don't fuck with my good nature. Like literally someone went into it and there's only two of these ballots. In all total, there's four kind of, okay, you guys are fucking assholes and stupid ballots. But then there's two ballots specifically that I didn't count at all. Because they were all, yeah, um, they were all like uh, the the yeah. horse head stuff. Yeah, that that stuff. I I said okay, fuck you, ha, fun. But the mystical one, there's two ballots where he's the only person voted in in the most influential. But then the rest of the ballot is filled out in a way that's like okay, they took some time to think about everything else. So I don't know what to do. I mean, with maybe this a fifteen one. A, fifteen B, but I, I guess the main point would be whoever did that. Like just read read the goddamn directions. It says vote for six. It doesn't say vote for one. That's about about as simple as I can put it. Yeah, I I I don't know. I'm. He had some good stuff. I I'm mean, he, willing. He had some to, good stuff. He did. He did. I'm willing to gloss over it, um, in the hopes that when the when the person or persons who filled this out, just either really suck at reading, which it's pos- yeah, it could be. I'll accept. <laughs> Or they legitimately just looked at it and they said, I'm going to vote for Mystical because he did this and everybody else I can't choose from them. I, I mean it's I, – I don't like it at all. So I'm not certain what I'm going to do with it. Trash, you, you should be number 15 if, if I decide to take Mystical out. Well, <sighs> from a content standpoint like, uh, standpoint, like I said, he had some of the results of the, uh, the video stuff. They have been doing a little bit more. Mystico admittedly didn't do as much writing as I expected him to coming out of the the number one contenders match at Super Turmoil. But they did get involved with the tag team championships. They didn't just kind of let that die and try and just beat him in the ring and forget about any storyline aspect to it, which is good. Uh, so he, he was impactful. I don't, I don't know if he's 15. It's tough to say. But um, I'd have to see the other names on the list that he, he got jumped over. Okay. What's the time on this right now? Minutes. Okay, so you think we got enough time to run through our ballots and just give that, and then we'll close out 45 minutes? Sure. Done? Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, uh, you know, why, don't you, why don't you go first? I'm kind of curious to know how you perceive and how others might perceive the wording of this, because I know that, I know that the wording, like, most influential. What the fuck does that mean? Um... So may, I, I'm curious to know what your thought process was when you took okay, time to okay, vote on yeah, this. So you, you want me to go through like how I voted? Okay. Yeah, question uh, number one, your six, and how okay, you justified it. Okay, so obviously it. there were a few locks in here. For me, they were Rex, Paul Pugh, B-17, and Bobby Minio. Those were four locks that I had. So I knocked them out right away. Um, and if this... I, if this, for whatever reason, th- my name is not on there, but this is going off the top of my head. If I fuck one of the answers up that I actually voted for, I apologize. Um, but that being said, there were four locks, and I think you'd probably agree with me there. Uh, some of the ones that are super high up here that I'm looking at just based on question number one's answers that I did not vote for. Uh, Cassidy Hayes, didn't vote for him. Um, Austin Lee was in the top 15. He's kind of in the middle here, didn't vote for him. Um, Jacob Trance. I didn't vote for him. H2O, I didn't vote for him. So it was very difficult between the last two spots. I voted for Code Jackman uh, because of what we talked about earlier, just the impact that he had in his actual feud and kind of coming out of his shell and being a part of one of the most creative things that I've seen. Um, And Drago, just because, yeah, I, I just... It's another, like I said earlier, when I saw him at 14, I, my brain immediately was like, yeah, of course, Drago. Drago's on all the shows. He's got interesting content, whether he's RPing by himself, doing P3 stuff. And I love the P3 stuff. So that I'm going to mark out for that no matter what. So um, probably I don't vote for myself in these things. So, I mean, I, I probably could have stole a couple votes by doing that. I know it's not like against the rules or anything. I just don't do it. Uh, but yeah, that, that was my six. I thought there were four easy locks and the other two you could fill in between any of these top names we're seeing here. Okay. Sure. Let me tell you mine. 
I voted for Rex as well. I felt that that was a solid lock. He was the driving factor in the main event feud for Turmoil. I voted for Code Jackman, and I also voted for B-17 because I felt that that was the best ongoing feud in OCW, the best ongoing storyline. And, like, we... We have so many diverse things that are happening with us with with the inclusion of the potential factions working with us and then, you know, helping out with with the tag division as well. So I felt very comfortable. I don't have any issue voting for myself. It, like I feel it's it's necessary. Like be honest with yourself. I've had these um, I've had uh these power rankings where I didn't vote for myself one time, but I try to be as honest as possible. Yeah, with it's, it. it's difficult. Um I voted for H2O because he he was the champion. He was writing. He was making a very big impact. He was the key face. But I did vote for Paul Pugh because I felt Paul Pugh was the driving factor in the main event feud on, on Riot. But then I also voted for Cassidy Hayes, not because he you know, did a lot with it, but because so many other people were talking about Cassidy Hayes uh, and were yeah. on the shows, like like if 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 people are talking about you without you prompting it to happen, like if there's an RP where your name is brought up and people speak about you and you're referenced and you're always this ominous presence, then you've done a tremendous job and Cass has done that tremendous job. So being part of the main event feud while constantly getting brought up, that played enough role in my mind to justify voting for him. So that's my six. And I hope that the justifi- justification makes sense. Like influential, you know, that, that's vague on purpose. Like it could be. It's what the, like, it's what the word who means. Who was you. on a really good. Who, really what it is. Who, who was on a really good streak in terms yeah. of matches. You can talk about feuds. You can talk about presence and RPs and stuff. This is a chance for everything to kind of come and, and mix into you know all opinions. Sure. So. Yeah, it's, and I think just to touch on you voting for yourself, it's not just because I'm sure a majority of people in OCW do it. Um, I think one thing that hits me with that is I, I've, been, I've been in another group, another community, for six years and in all of our polls for the end of the season awards we're not allowed to vote for ourselves so it's just kind of something that is ingrained i don't want to come off as a snob you know who's like if you vote for yourself you're a fucking idiot i mean if you're submitting um if you're submitting ballots where it says who is the most influential female and you put you as a male wrestler or you're being dumb and you your feud sucked but you write it in over shit like uh the b17 or the paul pew thing like at that point just stop being a clown like you said be honest but um yeah it's you're absolutely right b17 deserves to be voted for Okay, uh, the next one was top five matches that stood out to you over the past months, which is a lot of matches to put. So I don't put every single match. I look at every single card and I say, do I remember the match? If I do remember the match, I put it on. If I can't remember the match, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to put like, let's see, there's what, roughly five matches on each card. And there was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven regular yeah. shows. So we're looking at 35 matches alone from that. And then add in the pay per view another, you know, another eight or so. It's just too many. So I, I, I put on all the pay per view shows and then or matches, and then I go back through the cards and say, okay, this one I remember, this one I remember, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So for me. Some of them are a little bit obvious. One is uh, I don't know if you're gonna laugh at it just because I I mentioned it in a um, in the general chat. One of them that I voted for and it was, was B17 versus the Anime Prince, and I know you said that you didn't care for that match in terms of, like overall quality, but I thought it was super underrated, and I was shocked that like nobody talked about it more, just because with the combination of the story and the big comeback that Bray had and actually beating. B-17. I thought it was one of the best. So I picked that one. Uh, the safety first match, uh, another B-17 match. Um, I picked uh, B-17 versus Mugen because it was a hardcore war. And it was like sometimes you want to think about all the different nuances and, and things in the ring. Just I, That match always comes back to me because it was just fun. It was just fun to actually turn a match on and be able to watch crazy shit happen between two people who know what they're doing. 
Uh, so I picked that one. That that one just stuck mm-hmm. out of my brain. I did not pick the Sea Community versus Invictus. Just thought it was too messy. And then with all of the, you know, all of the, uh, yeah, all the drama, the, the locker room heat. I just wasn't one of my favorite matches on the card. Um, Paul Pugh versus Cass versus H two O. I think that's an easy lock. I think you'll agree with me there. But all of those guys being at the top yep. of the, the card, and then three of the most influential people, and then all of the shit that happened afterwards with fame and just it was just so good the whole thing was great the, the low blow the, there was a lot of great moments those three guys know what they're doing bobby court shepherd already touched on it earlier about bringing um i guess for yeah like going for the pun bringing pride back to the mid card championship and actually raising its status and that's what you should be doing with titles is making them important along with bobby getting the the final laugh at the pay-per-view being a great moment. I picked that one as well. So that was four. And then my final one was actually another triple threat match. It was that champions triple threat match at the go home show, uh, or the go home riot. I think it was. And it was, it, it was just a fantastic match. That would be H2O versus Shepard versus Drago. The ending was great with Drago trying to jump in at the last minute. You know, there's super kicks flying. Like it was just a really, really fun match. Uh, as far as main events go, um, and I did the commentary on it, and I was popping all over the place. So that that was my fight. All right, uh, I do absolutely agree with you. Paul Pugh versus Cass versus H two O. That was one of my votes. I felt that the the entire match was was tense. I, I thought it was very dramatic that H two O was eliminated first, and a lot of people were like, "Oh shit." The H2O experiment <laughs> is over. Now is Cass going to get his title back? And then seeing, you know, Paul Pugh win at the end, you know, really capped off a great match for me. Um, same thing was Bobby versus Court versus Shepard. Seeing Bobby, you know, pull it out at the end, it was a very well done match. Everything was flowing naturally. I really loved it. I thought it was a great match. Um, I also voted for B17 versus Mugen. Because it was a match that stands out to me as one of the most enjoyable matches I've done. A lot of people responded well to it. Um, the ending, in my mind, is one of the best endings in an OCW match that I've seen, especially this year, where he goes for the one wing toot. I reverse it, and I have a finisher that literally sets up the same as him. So I just fall off the back of his shoulders. I set up the same way, and then I do the the Mugen died for your sins right onto a ladder. You know, it was it, to me it was like reminiscent of H two O getting caught oh, on the legendary. chair with the so, one wing of two. Legendary spot, right? So I voted for that. Uh, I voted for Trance versus Aries versus Lee, which is a match that happened a little right. while back. But to me, to me, it was a very well told story in terms of how things looked. Trance looked a step slow in that, so you're kind of trying to justify, okay, who, you know, these are all some aging veterans, but they're trying to showcase that they have, you know, a lot left, and that really is what set up a lot of the storylines that are currently going on turmoil. And then the last match I voted for was Pew versus Spider. Like I love that match. It was, it was spider was showing off it was close there was there was there was reversals it was dramatic it's like oh my god is is pew gonna lose to spider and never hear the end of it and then the in the end you know he, he pulled out the victory i thought it was a great match i felt like it didn't get talked about enough kind of like what you said about b17 and and bray and you know there's reasons why i i, I mean i enjoyed the match with bray but um in my mind, the Spider versus Pew was so much more significant in terms of being a competitive match. Yeah, and that's fair. And I think to just to cap off, finish what you said, I thought I was alone in the basket that, that loved the Trans Aries Lee match. I didn't really even think about it in the sense that uh, in the way that you did it, like that match started the top two pretty much capped off the top two turmoil matches on Clash or the two of the top um, overall feuds in OCW because it happened where Bornistico interfered, got involved with Austin Aries and literally five seconds later, Rex inserted himself into this, um, into this CCW title thing organically. And it, it just worked. So, uh, I agree with you there. Yep. To me, that's like a prime example of doing uh, cut scenes post-match yep. the right way. That was good. Like that set up that it, it wasn't, it wasn't a, a, a 
this slow, dramatic beatdown video. It was quick to the point. You can visually see, you know, what's happening and, and why it's happening. Like you could see the second that Rex attacked Trance, you knew, okay, he's going for the title. And then Bornistico and attacking Lee and Erzy is like, okay, they're going for the title. And it made it made sense. Everything made sense. And, and that's it really played a big part into why I liked the match so much. Um, which three female wrestlers were the most impactful leading up to the clash? This was difficult, and I, I am imagining I think you told me that you changed the amount of people we're allowed to vote for sometimes. I imagine that three uh, was kind of intentional, or I would like to think that anyway, just because there were four clear cut winners, and you kind of have three to make sure one dropped off. I'm a Valk Mark, I always have been, and I don't apologize for it, so that's one of mine right there. I actually, like I kind of mentioned, I, I referenced it when we were going through the top 15. I left Ashley Moore off of my ballot, and I put both Dragana and Ashley Blaine on uh, two, uh, two and three. Just uh, Ashley Blaine and Dragana bringing more prominence. I, I'm always a fan when people are making the, the championships more prominent. Plus, I think not a lot was discussed about like the the different trials that they did on on the shows. You know, they had the the arm wrestling just to start it off, and then they went through the bull riding, and they did all of that crazy shit. Um, and I thought it was super well done, and it came to a head in one of the craziest matches <laughs> in terms of, like, what is going to finally put this crazy woman down. So uh, just the way that it elevated and um, was a visual representation of a growing and diverse women's division uh, was the reason I just put both of them on there. They both deserved all the credit. Mm -hmm. I have the same exact as you. I have Blaine, Valkyrie, and Dragana, and pretty much for every single reason you just said, Valkyrie, you know, represents the most over female in history. OCW. Um, yeah, probably history, absolutely, probably. Um, Blaine and Dragana were squaring off and, and going for the title, so it makes sense that you would consider them to be the most impactful because, you know, they're fighting for the title. And I mean I can't really disagree with anything that you said. That that's that's my three. That's how I looked at it as well. Easy peasy. Um easy. Which rookie caught your attention? I always struggle with this one, but I think we probably agree on it. Okay, since you think that I want you to go first. Yeah. Dog Green. That's easy. Uh, I will say, since we both agree for Doc, it's probably for the, the obvious reasons of that any rookie succeeds. He doesn't have any bullshit around him. His matches are always, if they're being talked about in an FPR sense, it's because the other person can't follow FPR. He's he's great in the ring in terms of his move set. It looks clean. He always has the same few spots that he tries to go to, like a great face does. Um, it, it works, the stories he's t he tells in the ring. Obviously, the ambition match helped, I'm sure, uh, with showing how good he was in the ring. And he's very consistent writing. I, I think because he's more vocal in OCW's community than Antonio Everett, he got a lot more votes than him. I don't know if you agree with that part of it, uh, but both of them are great. I talk to them all the time behind the scenes. Um, and yeah, Doc Green was the easy pick for me. I'm actually kind of shocked at how many votes some of the uh, other people got. Okay, well, this... This is always interesting for me because I always struggle with the rookies. Like as you, you actually told me, hey, the last blacksmith yeah. is still a rookie. And Ashley Moore is not. I was, I was surprised by that. Right, and I, you know, if the last blacksmith had been on the list from the get go, I think he probably would have been closer. I don't know if he would have necessarily overcome mm -hmm. Dot Green, but to me, when it comes to voting for the rookies, I don't see all their content. I don't read the entire shows. Um, you know, Keith Hendricks said that there's not enough time to watch OCW. Well, maybe there's not, but if you're one of those people that's in that situation, then you need to do what a lot of people in OCW do. do. Identify what you like, watch it, ingest it, keep your eyes open, for something that you might like from somebody else and then give their stuff a chance when you get the opportunity to, if you like it, you know, throw that into the mix as well. Just That's how I do it. I watch every single match, but if the match drags, I will skip to the end and see who wins. I will skim through every single RP. If I catch something that intrigues me, I will read it, but I look out for specific people doing their things because I know that I will enjoy it. Yeah. And I, uh, um, and, and Doc, no, I was just going to say, ahead. I think it's very, impactful that you say that because you 
I don't want to use the word represent, but you stand on the same field as I think a lot of veterans in OCW in terms of how they digest the product. So for the rookies to catch your eye, uh, it's kind of indicative of how well they're doing. So it's it's good to hear that, I'm sure, for these guys. Yeah. And Doc caught my eye, and I he caught my eye for a couple of reasons. The match on Ambition, oh, yeah. that um, I, I did not want to take any consideration for Ambition into this because I'm still I, – I believe Ambition – like operates on its own sense like what happens in ambition ambition doesn't necessarily translate into the traditional so shows but it's so hard to ignore what happened there and then throw in the fact that he's been consistent he's had matches against kd he's putting in content and no controversy with him it would be very hard to ignore him like ty sparks there's there's really very little controversy around him but he hasn't really done this much and i saw that he got quite a few votes and i had to ask myself Okay, I I understand why people that know him and work with him might say it, but if you're being honest with yourself, your green is 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 a shoulder above where most rookies are outside of maybe the last blacksmith. Yeah, at this and, moment. and uh, the last blacksmith, as you mentioned, he should, probably should have got more votes. And Sparks, I I didn't think of it that way, but he might have been a product. He was second in votes for anybody who doesn't know. Um, he I don't I don't see it. I mean, in terms of, like, all the things that go into being impactful on OCW, if all of your friends in the DM chat just voted you in there, then, I mean, that's great. He's a great guy. I've, I've call, I know he's a good egg, and hopefully he does better things in the future. But uh, Empress, I thought, was way more impactful uh, from the little time that she's been here. Antonio Everett was right up there with Doc. Blacksmith was pro probably should have been second. I even thought Bell has done a great job. So uh, we have some solid, solid rookies in OCW, and Doc is leading them all right now. Mm -hmm. Which tag team faction had the most impact over the past two months? This was difficult because if there was one place I would vote for myself, it would be this one. I did not. I voted for the Uncrowned for many of the same reasons I mentioned that Doc and Antonio got my vote in the, well, Doc, on behalf of both of them on the rookie thing. Um, personally, if I, if I wasn't, you know, if I was not, Caring about inconsistency on the ballot, I would have just picked my own team because I still think that we carry the load and we're on every single show and we're always doing different promos and, you know, we're on Riot and Turmoil. So that's just slurping myself a little bit. But uh, Uncrowned was my pick, and that's pretty much for lack of regurgitating what I just said in the rookie ballot. Okay. Uh, I picked UTT because of what you just said. They are prominent members that appear on both shows, Turmoil and um, and Riot. They played a major factor in the main event feud that's ongoing while contributing to tag team feuds that are ongoing. There has been video content. There have been RPs. They have been everywhere upon the shows, and they get mentioned regularly. I know Discord should probably not play an impact in these rankings, but it's very hard to ignore how much promotion is done for TTT within the Discord. And I find it funny. Like I, I, I always watch as people get like like Jay gets mad with, with Spider always <laughs> shilling himself. But I laugh and I, I watch it happen and I think it's funny. I think it's it's unique how they come about with different ways to promote themselves and, and, and I feel like the team itself it it shouldn't have been close. The vote winner for this category was the C community, was, yeah, I believe, just by a little bit over TTT, and I and I disagree with that because the C community is not the same C community that started, um, that that started the back when the Paul ranking started in the, in the super turmoil. Like that was that used to be Bray and Betamax, and it transitioned into Damian and Mystico. Yet the more consistent factor was the story between Code and B-17, not necessarily the faction itself. Yeah, I think you're right. Although I understand why people might say it because the videos were promoted under the C community banner. I still felt TTT was the better, more cohesive unit. Well, and while I, like, while I agree with you, the people seem to think differently. <laughs> and I, I definitely uh, think that it stole some votes just because of you 
uh, being there and the former B community. It, like the, the storyline is, is what ran that faction. Yeah, the storyline is the more um, appropriate vote getter in my opinion. So that brings us to what storyline was the most intriguing for you. And I was honestly torn between two of them. And in the end um, – Oh, actually, you're supposed yeah, to go first. Well, Anyways, well, what that doing? Was, uh, you go. It was a great segue talking about the, how the storyline dominated the tag team and faction vote. Um, I, this was probably the one that shocked me more than anything else because I did not expect them, the code in B17 to run away with this. I thought it would be a lot closer just because there were great storylines. Dragana versus Blaine was way too low in my opinion. I can't believe they got that few of votes. I picked Pew Returns because, quite simply, I'm a Pew Mark, and he... He really elevated the title in the main event feud on um, on Riot and the world title, and just I'm I'm just a, a sucker for classic wrestling stuff, you know, like uh, something they would do in the mid 2000s is bring back this legend and have him run roughshod through the roster. So, taking into account, it's the same reason I voted for him as one of my locks as the most impactful, and you know, it's it's got to be Pew here. Okay. I voted for Pew Returns as well. But I was strongly thinking I have to pick Code Jackman and, and B-17. And in the end, I came to this kind of conclusion for myself. I felt that what Code and I has been more creative, more unique, and has been probably more of an enjoyable story for for myself to kind of digest and, and and read and see how he's reacting because he doesn't tell me everything he's doing like he'll he'll put shit up that i'll be reading on for the, the first time <laughs> on a show and i'm like oh you son of a <laughs> fucking bitch i can't believe you just did that like i had no idea that's great um about him kicking bray and 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 um Flo- and flojo and like everyone out of the community and i'm just sitting there like oh Oh, now you got to do this. <laughs> and, yeah, so like but it, it's been it's been really fun. No doubt. But in the end, I I went with the with the feud, with the story that as you said is more of a, it has built the prestige even more of the Riot Championship. Like it's it's a main event feud. The title is being lifted by this. There's a returning legend fighting for this belt. It just felt like it was a more important storyline. Maybe not necessarily a better storyline, but a more important storyline in the sense that what's happening is going to have repercussions to Riot for, I don't know, the next next year probably. Because now we're left with, with so many questions like – like how long can Pew keep this up? Is he really still the all-time great? Who is going to unseat him? Is is Cast done? Is H two O done? Like oh my God, what's Fame doing now? Like how are they going to impact this show? Whereas Code and me is more of a personal feud, and I think at the end of this, when when we go our separate ways, both of us will be better for it. Like I really see both of us going on to and being happy with the way it ends. But the what the Pew return has has a much greater potential to change yeah. everything. No, no, I totally agree sense? with you. That uh, Code in B seventeen is definitely more creative. I mean, we've seen this type of legend comes back and he does this thing and it's a big pop because it's Paul Pew. We've seen that story before in wrestling in uh, any type of media or art really, and it's classic and it works every time. And it works, especially when you have such a character and a, a really good character at that, like Paul Pugh, uh, now with fame. And like you said, all the different things. So Coden B 17 was more creative, I thought, uh, but the ramifications that what Pew is doing is going to impact OCW for a long time. Not just Paul Pugh, Cassidy Days, and H2O. This is this is the entire Fed that's going to be affected by this, and especially the Riot brand. Whereas you guys, it's like you said, it's just personal. So that's a very important point. Okay, so I mean, we've gone through everything I, I want to get to. I got a few minutes left here before I can say, "Hey, let's close this up." I think a good way to to to, to potentially end this might be to say, "Hey, are there um, 
anything that wasn't discussed, like people that got a lot of votes that uh, kind of stood out to you, or is there anything that, um, like you look at and you say, I'm, I don't really know how to react to that, or maybe you even uh, have something to contribute in terms of, of, of where you'd like things to go, uh, post this, um, uh, this power ranking and how people might well, react to it. I know that it. there are big things on the horizon just based on what I am working on right now, um, not to spoil anything. In terms of touching on people we didn't really talk about during the power rankings, Court uh, was not in the top 15, and he did not get a lot of action that we talked about overall. A lot of the um, Pride title stuff was centered around Bobby Minio and Shepard, but I think Court Marshall's impact on how that whole thing played out not even being in matches, I thought that was commendable to be to to say the say the least. Um, on the actual web show, I mean, there was a little bit of confusion about how to announce his presence in the triple threat. It didn't matter really because the viewing party was not; they were just losing their mind and really pay attention. Um, <laughs> but the match was fun, and Court's presence at the beginning, where he was like this returning powerhouse and he's kicking everybody's ass in and out of the ring, it was a fun moment of the match even even if he didn't win so he deserves a hats off even uh even though he wasn't competing most of the time um in terms of where i expect things to go i hope rex has a really dominant title run like h2o's i think it would really put a damper on what he's done with jacob trance if he comes out there and loses it to somebody um especially somebody like Mystico, uh, I know he's probably not in the picture, but he was involving himself in the picture at the end of Clash. So I really hope Rex is able to hang on to it and be the mean piece of shit heel that he should be. There were some people that didn't do a, a whole lot this month who I really hope push forward and get into the top, te top 10 next month. Um, myself, obviously. I was in there with TTT, I guess, but uh, I would like to have my own name higher than it was. I just I can't fault my anybody but myself for that. Got to put better content out to get votes. Justin Jest is in the middle of a move. We're probably not going to see him again. Mugen has the P3 thing going on, but really that's it. I would I want to see more Mugen because I love his character. Um, AC Cobra has tools and he ha he like he's a funny writer, but he just doesn't do anything. I, I would kind of hope and pray that he does more. The same could be said really about um, about Bray. So those are just some names that I've that since we didn't talk about them, I, I, I'm really hoping to see bigger things from them going forward. Uh, oh, and, and Talos as well, uh, another one of the recently promoted rookies since he just finished up a feud and he can kind of separate himself from all of that, see how he can spread his wings without Dennis Dillinger. So I, I can't really think of anything else off the top of my head. You know better than anybody from doing a couple of these with me that I can just sit here and talk for fucking hours, so I'll, I'll shut up now and let you go. Well, I mean, that's you know, when I when I look at this, um, I how do how do I how do I properly phrase this? I think the best way of phrasing this is that so, sometimes there have been examples where people look at this and they don't take it fully seriously, and, and they're just like, oh, it, oh, it's just a popularity contest. But let's be very honest here. This this is definitely like. This is not a popularity contest. This is something that I honestly believe that if you if you delve into and you think about what's happening and, and how people are reacting to to you, like it helps make you a lot better. Like I the motivation to do a storyline in a certain way and to continue doing it has been brought upon by watching how people have reacted to other storylines like if people don't like my past stuff i i think to myself okay how 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 do i fix it how do i make it so that one it's still me because that's very important but then how do i make it to where people enjoy it because ultimately that's the biggest thing like people enjoying your stuff and and good that's things will happen to you so w when people look at this and and people can ask me i won't i won't publish this um, for public reasons because I could see people taking this and, and, and using it against people and kind of being dicks about it. But if everyone, if anyone ever asked me and says, hey, where did I end up? I can tell you, okay, this is how people responded to you. I can kind of make some educated guesses about why or how it happened. And you can use this to your advantage. So, you know, take it seriously. Like, I think a lot, I think this is probably 
you know, even though there were four ballots that were cast in a way that didn't really seem too serious, um, ultimately that's still more contributions than than we've ever had from from OCW. And I think it's important that people you know continue to do this even when they're not getting represented. Um, once there was one time when when Nate told me, "I'm happy that you're doing this, even if it's not working out for you," because there was a time when I like was not even on the rankings and I still did it because I, I honestly do believe that it is beneficial for everyone to kind of take, you know, stock of the situation, take a step back and say, Hey, this is where I am. This is how people have responded to me. Like, you can think you have the absolute best matches in the world and you can be cocky and shitty like that. And it, no one responds to you. Like, if, if you're a rookie and you think that you're having absolute barn burner matches and no one gives a fuck about those matches, then you need to think about why that is. And that's why this exists. So, you know, that that's my closing thoughts. Do you have anything that you want to contribute? You, it's important, like you said, to take this seriously because the whole reason we're doing this is, <laughs> you know, for fun and we're all trying to make OCW the best product and – if you want to be up here, then pay attention to what your audience says. There's a reason people aren't responding to you, just like you said. And not everybody has the time to write all kinds of fancy reviews every single show to give you feedback. And not everybody has the energy to do a bunch of podcasts all the time and give you feedback specifically. So this is a great, succinct, brief way you know, for you to see exactly how people are responding to you. Rookies. If you're not super high on this list, it's pretty. It's like it ne that never happens, as far as I'm aware. It very rarely. I think Valkyrie is one of the only examples of somebody being super high on one of these lists. Um, you should be just inspired that you're being on, like your name is on the ballot. That's the first step, and then you'll eventually get up there if you remain consistent. And going back to what you said. It only takes one thing to catch somebody's eye. And if you start catching veterans' eye, they're going to start paying attention about you. They'll talk amongst themselves. They'll talk on the forums. They'll talk in Discord. And then the more your name gets out there, um, the more consistent you are. Just, uh, yeah, like you said, take it seriously and use it as a way to not only better yourself, your own content, but to better the, the product as a whole. Absolutely. Go ahead and put it better. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. Hopefully uh, you, you, you enjoyed this, uh, learned a few things about how you know the, the process works, and you know, um, enjoy, guys. Uh, thank you once again for, for taking the time to, to do this. I, I'm really appreciative of it, and uh, you know, best of luck going forward heading Bye. into Lucian. Bye.